Hello and welcome to this teach which is going to be on cataracts. So in this teach we'll be looking at what a cataract is, so its pathology, how patients present with it and how it's managed and in doing so we'll be looking at the anatomy of the lens as well. So what is a cataract? A cataract is an opacity of the lens in the eye, so there's a clouding of it, which leads to reduced visual acuity. Around 50 cases of blindness around the world are caused by age-related cataracts, and 30% of people in the UK, aged 65 or over, have at least one cataract that leads to visual impairment. There are a number of different risk factors for cataracts, so among them are increasing age, so the prevalence of cataracts goes up with age, being female, diabetes, Steroid use increases your risk, as does trauma and uveitis. This is inflammation of your uveal tract, so that's the iris, ciliary body, and the choroid. Exposure to UV light, so pilots are one example of people who might be more likely to get cataracts. Smoking and alcohol, and genetics play a part too. There's a heritability of cataracts of around 55%. Let's start looking at cataracts by looking at the anatomy of a normal lens without a cataract. So this is a cross section of the eye, and in the anterior chamber we can see the lens, the iris sitting anterior to it, the ciliary body, and the zonular fibres which connect the lens to the ciliary muscle of the ciliary body. So the lens is a biconvex structure, like a 3D oval, uh, but it's flatter anteriorly than it is posteriorly, and it refracts light onto the retina, so this is, works alongside the cornea. Uh, the lens has a power of about 20 diopters, and the cornea are about 40 diopters, leading to a total of 60 diopters of refraction of the whole eye. The shape of the lens can be adjusted to allow for accommodation of objects at different distances. So let's move to a picture of the anterior chamber alone so we can look at this a bit better. So it's the ciliary muscles which are responsible for adjusting the shape of the lens. They attach to the lens by zonular fibres. So with accommodation, the ciliary muscle contracts, and that pulls the lens forward and relaxes the tension in the zonular fibres, leading to the lens becoming fatter and making it more powerful. So I'll just repeat that so you can see it in text. So the ciliary muscle contracts first of all, that pulls the lens forward and relaxes the tension in the zonular fibres, making the lens fatter and therefore more powerful, allowing for accommodation. This is a close-up image of the lens. So you can see that it has an inner nucleus surrounded by a cortex and encased within the lens capsule. This capsule is elasticated, uh, it contains collagen, which allows it to alter shape as we described just now. So below the capsule, the lens has a simple cuboidal epithelium, which is responsible for regulating the efflux and the influx of water and nutrients from the aqueous humour, which sits outside it in the anterior chamber and ions also move through the sodium-potassium pumps. So if we just quickly label the main bits, we've got the nucleus, the cortex, and the capsule surrounding it. Most of the lens is made up of lens fibres, which are produced by this epithelium. New fibres are added to the outside of the cortex, and the nucleus contains the older fibres. So as the lens continues to grow, the fibres get pushed inwards towards the nucleus, and the lens continues to grow throughout life. Within these lens fibres, the lens also contains proteins called crystallins, and these are normally quite clear, transparent proteins which are responsible for helping the refraction of light. And over time, these degenerate, and this is a process which can be sped up by systemic disease like diabetes, uh, radiation from UV light and trauma as well, and steroids. Uh, and the degeneration of the crystallins causes a whitening opacity of the lens and reduces its ability to refract the light. And we classify age-related cataracts into a number of different types, depending on where they are in the lens. So the most common ones are nucleus sclerosis, and these are in the nucleus of the lens. And these are formed by new layers of fibres compressing onto the lens nucleus. There's also cortical, which is in the outside cortex. And that's a passivation of the cortical fibres. Then we've got posterior subcapsular, and that's in the central parts of the lens posteriorly. So here we've got a cortical one, anterior and lateral. 
posterior subcapsular and nucleus sclerosis. If we just stop quickly and think about cataracts in children, just to touch on them. Uh, so cataracts are normally a disease of adults uh, increasing in prevalence with age, but children can get them too. And they're normally either congenital, developmental or acquired. So congenital cataracts or inherited ones are the most common cause of cataracts in children in the West. These can either be isolated or part of a systemic inherited condition. Uh, so this is things like galactosemia, which is an inherited condition affecting your ability to metabolize galactose, the sugar. Um, or it could be an ocular condition as well, such as aniridia, which is the lack of an iris. Uh, and think about acquired cataracts, these are less common in the West. Uh, but in the developing world, infection is the biggest cause of these. So you've got things like rubella, measles and cytomegalovirus as well. So that's how people develop cataracts. But how's a patient going to come to you with one? How are they going to present? So normally they'll come to you with a gradual loss of vision, and this will be pain-free. There's no pathological process causing pain here. Uh, they'll notice a steady decline in their vision over time. They might notice difficulties with reading, or with watching TV, or with recognising faces. And they might also notice glare and halos from light. And this is because of the impaired refractive ability of your eye. If you imagine you've got a cloud and trying to look through a cloudy bit of paper, it's harder to see, and uh, light will be... When you examine the patient, you might notice a defect in their red reflex uh, caused by the opacities. And when you examine them through a slit lamp, you'll be able to see the cataract in one of the different places, uh, so nucleus sclerosis, cortical or posterior subcapsular. And we've got a picture of that here. So this photo shows quite a severe nucleus sclerosis cataract, so you can't see at all through the lens, it's all just the white pacification, and that's the cataract. So you've got a patient that you know has a cataract now and you want to decide how to manage it. Uh, so first of all you want to consider the patient's ability to drive. So are they able to read a license plate at 20 metres, uh, which is about 6 over 10 on the Snellen chart. And there's no recognised medical treatment for cataracts, so the majority of the treatment is going to be surgical. And there's no definitive threshold for saying when you will do surgery. It's more about how, how much is the cataract impacting on the patient's quality of life, so how much is it affecting their ability to see. And obviously this can be different for different patients, it's uh, something you'll want to discuss with them. And once you and the patient have decided that you're going to go for surgery in it, the procedure that's normally carried out is something called phacoemulsification. And we'll go into it quickly just because it's quite a common procedure and it's quite good to have a handle of what's going on. So phacoemulsification is a procedure where you use ultrasound to break down the contact of the lens and replace it with a, an artificial intraocular lens. So firstly, the surgeon is going to make a hole in the cornea, a clear corneal incision, and following that, a hole in the lens capsule, which is called a capsulotomy. Then they're going to emulsify the body of the lens itself, so the cortex and the nucleus, with an ultrasound probe and extract it. They'll aspirate the rest of the remaining soft lens matter, and then they'll insert an artificial intraocular lens. Just got a few pictures to show what the intraocular lens looks like. So this is what it is. So it's a foldable thing you put into the capsule and then it folds out and you replaces the natural lens of the eye with this artificial one. And this is what one looks like in the eye. And again, this is one in the eye with the red reflex reflecting behind it. This procedure is really good. It's got great results. So if you have no other problems with your eye, 95% of patients will have 6 over 12 best corrected vision. So you can see the big difference it can make from patients going from having a cataract uh, with pretty poor vision up to having this really good vision really um, from this procedure. But as with any surgical technique there are some complications with it and we'll touch on them quickly as well. So you can divide them into early or late complications. So if we look at the early ones, these can be post-surgery capsule rupture, because you leave the capsule intact to hold the artificial lens, so that can rupture afterwards, and that happens to about 3% of people. Uh, you can have some loss of the vitreous humour through the rupture. Uh, you can get some iris trauma, hemorrhage into the anterior chamber, and post-operative infection, 
to, which is known as endophthalmitis. That's infection inside the eye. That's quite a serious complication. And you also get wound leak, macular edema, and retinal detachment. That's particularly common in myopic, so people with uh, close vision. Late complications include opacification of the posterior uh, capsule, and that happens in about 20% of people, so it's quite a common uh, complication, but it can be treated by polishing the capsule with a laser, and that brings it back to normal. Uveitis is another late complication that can occur, and with macular degeneration, uh, it can make it worse early, so you're not more likely to get macular degeneration, but in patients already predisposed to macular degeneration, it can make it worse earlier. And that's it, that's the end of my teach. So what we've covered in summary, so we've done the anatomy of the lens, found out what a cataract is, so it's a, an opacification of the lens in the eye. Find out how one presents with reduced visual acuity and some glare around lights and a cataract when you examine them with the slit lamp. And we found out how they're treated, so that's with, mostly with surgery by the Baco emulsification method. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something from it. And as ever, I'd really appreciate some feedback if you could leave it in the comments section or uh, if you could email it to me if you know me, that'd be great. Thanks very much.